What's up, everyone, and welcome back to episode 194 of the Bench Time Podcast. I guess it's not welcome back. I say that a lot. It's just welcome to episode whatever number it is. Oh, you say welcome back to the Bench Time Podcast. Welcome back to the Bench Time Podcast, folks. Yeah. It's a late Sunday evening. Welcome back on a late Sunday evening. Yeah, we kind of pushed it. We kind of pushed it. The Bench Time Podcast. What? I was like trying to be like a smooth late night radio talk show host. Oh, I see. Welcome back to the Sunday night edition of the Bench Town Podcast. Yeah. This week's yeah, episode is sponsored by. <laughs> no, no, we don't have any sponsors. All right. <laughs> we should get us. Anybody out there want to sponsor us? You get in touch with us. We're into that. You know. Yeah, but... I guess. Hmm? I guess, but then it would be like a job. Not really. Eh, you're not, right. Not really. I'm not changing my... We're not going to change the format of this thing just because somebody, you know, if they either want to be involved, you know, want to support us or whatever, not going to dictate how we do our show. Yeah, I want to be sponsored by... Um, or, they keep their, or they can keep their money. I want to be sponsored by Tight Bond Original Wood Glue. Yeah. <laughs> We've had offers in the past uh, from people that wanted to that that wanted to uh, what would be a, be a you know so a sponsor or whatever by running probably run their ads and whatnot on there. But you know we we decided against that at the time because you know, we didn't want those people to be uh, able to dictate what we can say and how we can do it, and we knew that that would be the case with that particular person. Yeah, or with that particular company. So um, we had that happen actually a couple times, but but I'm yeah. not to having a sponsor. I'm all for that, you know. As long as it's uh, like uh, like the Spit and Chicklet podcast. I mean, they they say whatever the hell they want. They don't let anybody dictate what's on their on their show. Yeah. So anyways, well, don't worry about it. We don't have one, so don't, you guys don't need to worry about that right now. <laughs> um. Anyways. So, we did a little bit of um, unpacking, and you have some questions you were going to answer, and uh, or a question you're going to answer. Yeah. And uh, we had a little bit of news from the, if you've seen some pictures with the updates of our workbench or our layout, you saw some of that news, but we're going to kind of talk about that. Um, yeah, let's start with that. Let's talk about our layout. So, yeah. Uh, and, and what we did the other weekend... So I went over to Brett's house last week. He had yeah, last weekend. We had all, we had all the bench work that has already been built and done. Um, and yeah, of course, all we Brett put a one inch piece of foam or the XPS foam or whatever um, was the pink stuff. Uh, and he put that all over the top of the uh, the layout, uh, every square inch of it. Right. Yep. So it gives us a one inch foam base uh, all the way around. Kind of help deaden the sound, so you don't get that sound off plywood or anything else when running, when we run uh, uh, electric trains. So um, when we do that, uh, we 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 ha- we wanted to put down cork road bed, so I went out and bought some cork road bed uh, last weekend and brought it over to his place. I got a whole big box of it. I was told, by the way, that cork road bed is hard to find, and if anybody's out there and that that uh, knows more about why or how other than what I've been told at the hobby shop. I was told that cork road bed is hard to find due to forest fires that are um, putting a, I guess, wherever the cork road is cork road bed is bought from. This was Midwest is the company we bought from uh, for cork road bed. And apparently even they are having a hard time getting it in, especially we bought it in one of those, uh, 24, was it 24, 24 pack, mm-hmm. um, three foot sections of cork road bed and, um, one big box. But, uh, you know, he said, that's the last one I got. So, um, he said right now, he said, getting it in has been a bugger and everybody's having a hard time with it. So I don't know where it's coming from or where the forest fires, you know, I, I'm not even sure. <laughs> I'm not even sure what trees cork comes from? You know that, Brett? Um, I have no idea. I'm trying to look it up. <laughs> <laughs> but 
what what makes cork cork, man? Huh. You know, is it a process they put the wood through uh, to soften it or whatever? I mean, I wouldn't want to. Uh, you know how pliable cork is. I wouldn't want to be sitting under a cork tree. I never heard of a cork tree. <laughs> what the hell is cork from? It's uh, something in my education I've never uh, been given the information on or even thought about till tonight. Um, but the cork comes from the outer bank of a cork oak tree. Outer bark of a cork oak tree. The outer bark of a cork oak tree. Yeah. Okay. Well, and I guess it's peeled off uh, when they when they do forest, when they do um, lumber stuff or whatever, and then they what they compress it and you know, whatever some kind of process, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. Um, okay, well that's interesting. I did not know where it came from or whatever, but apparently it's uh, harder to come by right now. So uh, due to forest fires, although I think there's plenty of oak trees across the. No, it's not that. It's the orc coke. The cork oak tree. What? It's an actual type of cork oak tree. It's not a regular oak tree. So, but it's the bark from a cork oak tree. Yeah. It's not the wood of the tree. Correct. Yeah. Because I wouldn't want to be near that tree. No, I know. Snap and break. It just says it's the the bark from it. Oh, okay, okay. So, yeah, so the, uh, and somebody out there that knows anything about trees and where cork comes from is, yeah, I think Here it says there's not a cork shortage. Or complete, uh huh? Here it says there's no truth to be, to, there is no truth to the myth that there is a current cork shortage. Oh, well, there you go. This was I was lied to. Written. That means they just didn't order it. It was either they didn't order it or that company that makes it is just, they're just giving up. They're not making as much. Yeah, I can't imagine that's that's a big company. They've been doing it for a long time with Midwest, but who knows? You know, I don't know enough about Midwest or who runs it. So, but here I've found I found three articles now that say there is not a cork shortage. Okay, good, no cork shortage. Well, then apparently it was a widespread rumor because it was told to me as well, and I didn't really care one way or the other. Yeah, who knows? As long as I can get a box of the damn stuff, I don't care. So, but we have enough. We have enough. <laughs> We have enough now. We got spares too. So, uh, probably in my lifetime, we probably won't need any more cork roadbed. But, um, anyhow, here it says just to clear things up right away, uh, there's an abundance of cork. Although the majority of cork trees grow in a relatively small portion of the globe, there's enough cork on the planet today to seal all the wine bottles in the world for the next hundred years. Oh, well, there you go. So, it's not running out. No, that's a lot of wine bottles. Yeah, there's a lot of wine bottles. So yeah. Anyways, uh, yeah. So we laid out all so the track bed. Yeah. Road yep. bed. Well, no, no. Yeah, road bed. So we put that all down. Um, I'm excited about that. It's going to be a very minimalist uh, uh, layout design as far as uh, the amount of amount of track we're going to have to put down. And the amount of track is actually going to be visible, to be honest with you. I know. There's, there's not going to be a lot of visible for you train lovers. It's going to be enough to have a train go on and entertain our, his, Brett's kids and my grandkids. Um, so that that's that's good, you know. Um, and it'll give it that non-static look for, you know. Um, yeah, it's still got, I mean, it's still a bunch of track. It is. It is. It's Don't get me wrong. Lot of track. But half of it's hidden. Mm-hmm. It'll be underneath. It'll be running underneath the city, and uh, come out at different points of the city. But uh, yeah, I mean, it'll be good. I'm I'm looking forward to it. Actually, putting it putting it up and getting it running. I like the way we set up. I think it's going to be nice. Uh, it looks goofy now because it's just cork roadbed, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, but I think once we get it hidden and to put the tunnels in and and such. Uh, where you won't, where you'll see it go in and disappear and come out somewhere else. I think it'll be a nice setup. The nice thing about the way it's set up is I think it's going to be easier for us to operate it without having a lot of hiccups or issues. Right. So that'll be cool. You know? Yeah, no, it's going to go, it's going to go great. And another, the other cool thing about it is we can set our switching up to alternate the direction of it pretty frequently. Right. Right. Exactly. 
Like exactly. When you go into a loop and it comes out of the loop, you can set the switch to not move, and then when it comes back in through that area, it'll go the opposite direction. It'll turn the whole train around. Yes. And then we left the center section. It's going to be where the harbor is. That was the other cool part, is sectioning out or deciding those – our, our entire let up layout let up is um, shaped like the capital letter E. Okay, with this, the long section in the back will be the, the and then it will be one long, that, that's the long section of the letter E. And then the, the three outcrop sections of the letter E that come out from it will be um, different sections of the town. That we've decided on and you know so it'll be it'll be pretty cool but we're gonna have one section as the harbor mm-hmm. okay and not the whole thing but half of it will be and then there will be um we're gonna run switch switches out to it uh and then have a you know train go out onto one of the piers and then have the other uh switches go to a, 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 a kind of a mini yard and uh we'll have buildings out there um, and such around for the, the waterfront, right? Yes. And we have another section on the one uh, that faces it on the other side that juts out um, with the walkway in between, and we'll have a it it in 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 your mind's eye, it'll be the other half of the harbor. Okay, it, you know, so it'll you know that's how we set that up. But it's really not, you know, not much. It's just a little corner section of it. It'll be the harbor on that side. Yeah. And then on the far side will be um, a hill with, um, that's the, the third section, will be a hill. And it'll be more rural with, uh, you know, mills and um, country type businesses or, you know, the businesses you won't see necessarily or, or buildings that you would not necessarily see necessarily in a big city so um yeah it'll be cool yeah it'll be it'll be neat too because we can have um we're going to section out the three different parts of the layout in each part of the e right right like we don't we don't just have the harbor we have the harbor and we're going to do the city like you said and we're also going to have that country section right Right, and then we're going to do a nice elevated rail section along the front, so I'll make you, you train people happy. Um, it'll just be a trolley, but... Yeah, it'll be a trolley that runs along the front, but some of that will be elevated rail with girders and such, and uh, um, but we're going to make that happen, too. So that'll be cool. But, yeah, I mean, it, it, it was that, that part of it was fun, kind of setting it up, and it was like old times. It's like when we first started and we, we were, uh, you know, we kind of rushed into that when it didn't do it right. Right. But uh, it, it was still fun planning it. Now, this time was fun planning it with knowing the pitfalls from the past and then, you know, just the experience with modeling and, and, and such like that with model road running. Uh, we've learned over the years some of the pitfalls and, and things to make it a little better. Yes. The operation a little better and a little more convenient and... Uh, not so much dawning to the fact that we're, you know, we can actually turn it into something really special and nice. So. Mm-hmm. Now, what, what were some of the big pitfalls we had last time? What? What were some of the big pitfalls you think we had oh, last time? I don't time? know. Let's see. We, uh, we, we the, first, the first time, when we very first set it up, we had, it was six, eight, foot by four foot all the way across the first section, right? Mm-hmm. I think we added a couple little sections on the ends, but it, we had a... We built foam all the way up all the way across the, the top of it, and we had an upper and lower section, but then it went down to get to the center part of the section. Remember the first time? Yes. It was all inset. <laughs> in the middle. So it was like a big... It was like a big canyon in the middle with all the buildings down in, and then you had to go up a hill and then back down over to the to the other side. It was it was the most goofy thing. It was like a, I mean, it was a set up like a big, um, it, it was like the inside. It was like 
if you took a football stadium and covered it in grass. It was wild. It was like a bowl of a football stadium. It was the most goofy thing. That was so dumb. I don't know what we were thinking. And we we realized that in in short time. Mm-hmm. And then we just started ripping sections of that shit out and throwing it, you know? And then as a result of that, then we were chopping sections out here and chopping sections out there and piecing it together. And then finally we just got sick of that. Remember that? Yeah. And we just ripped it all out and then put instead went vertically up. Okay. Mm-hmm. And which was great in, in tiers. Unfortunately, we chopped it up a little bit too much too quick. Quite a bit. And we and we, we kind of we kind of shorted ourselves practical space for making roads and sidewalks and laying a city out properly, mm-hmm. you know? And we changed our mind too many times. And I'm going to recommend that to anybody, no matter if you're experienced or not, and doing a layout or a city layout, is don't keep changing your minds on where your buildings are going to go. Because we would change our minds, we'd move them here and there, and move them here and there, and we never really found permanent places for a lot of them. Right. And we would change them up, and it was it was just to the point where it, it we handicapped ourselves, I think. So um, this way now, the nice thing this time was that we had the buildings already built. We know exa- we were adding buildings as we go. We just kept building them and building them. And then we're like, okay, well, I'm going to build it, but it really has no, I really have no idea where we'll put it, you know, or how it fits in. Now we can, because they're already built. We have no, there's nothing set in stone yet. It's right now, it's just one big giant flat layout, you know? Yeah. So um, now we can pick and choose where our buildings are primarily done. How many we, did we count? Was that like 159, 158? 158. Yeah, 158, I think it was. 158 buildings, and that we'll, I'll let Brett talk about that part because we 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 had fun with that last week too. Um, but you know, so now we can know, you know, how to set them up, where they can fit, pick out and lay out where our roads will be. We know exactly how much space and what kind of footprint each building is going to take. Uh, it, it's you know, that's it's it's great. It's a huge advantage. Yeah. But what, yeah. well, what what did you want me to talk about? Pound packing. Yeah, yeah, do that. <laughs> Let, you know, give me a break from talking. I've been talking like crazy. Yeah, I mean, we were just uh, starting. We had a bunch. I don't know how many boxes we had. Eight, seven boxes or whatever, full of buildings. Six boxes full of buildings. Boxes too. Big ones. And um, we started ripping I, them. What? Each one of those boxes probably had like thirty billion in it. Well, some of them had more because they had those little buildings. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we had five build- five boxes, whatever. But they were all big, and as we were unpacking them, like, you could slowly start healing, hearing things, like, popping. As gentle as you tried to be. It doesn't matter how gentle you were. A little... It's little was wrapped in bubble wrap, too. Bubble wrap. Yeah, but as, li- as gentle as you tried to be unwrapping the bubble wrap, you'd still hear little pops and... Things flying off the building, ladders and stairs and building and signs and stuff coming off. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, nothing was broken to the point yeah, where it was, like it was irreparable. Shit. Yeah. But, uh, you know, everything's still everything's still usable and, and nothing's damaged ter- terribly. But uh, yeah. it was kind, kind of nerve-wracking because um, you, couldn't, uh, you couldn't help but remove something and... From the box and hear something breaking in it. <laughs> yeah, you'd hear a crunch, and then, you know, you, and it was you're right. It was just like chimneys and roof vents and billboards and stuff like that. Yeah, I had a couple. I and and we have all the parts, and they're going to be easy to just re-glue and put on. You know, it, there were a couple storefront signs that fell off and that type of thing, but yeah, that's again not not a big. It wasn't big awful. Issue. Yeah, it's just it's just makes you cringe because you painted it, you built it and you know what kind of time you put into it. And now you've got to redo it, you know, or just not redo it, but you know, fix it up again. It's yeah. Like, uh, uh, you know? Yeah. But, but it's not terrible. And most of it was like just detail parts. Right. Right. So yeah, exactly. Most of all, we didn't have really any structural damage. 
Um, so that that's a good thing. Yeah. But. Now the one thing we did do is we sorted the buildings as we unpacked them into like different areas that we want to put those buildings like we talked about earlier. So we have some water side buildings, we have industrial buildings, we did right. a section with uh, our city buildings like downtown and then we put all of our country or like rural buildings out on the one end. We're going to call it like the north side of the layout. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so, that was cool. It made it easy, too, because you and I would look at the building and go, okay, is this going to be rural or is it going to be city? Or is it going to be waterfront? Uh, you know, what is it? You know, is it a mill? Yeah. Well, we know what it is. You knew what it was by looking at it because we built it, obviously. But w we were able to put them in the areas that we thought we might use them best. You know, nothing set in stone yet, but that's, you know, that's – where we thought it would work out best. Yeah. And, uh, that's and the one thing I think I'm most excited about is that rural section of the layout. Mm -hmm. Because we have some buildings that we didn't know uh, what to do with them. Because they were like, we had a lot of city planned in the old layout. But now we had, we had, at the time we had like country stores. And they just didn't fit. They didn't fit what we had on the old layout. Right. But now we actually are going to dedicate a area that is more ur urban, or I'm sorry, rural, rural, and do a, a country say a country scene with like a hill that comes down off the um, um, Varga Fall, Varga Falls, yeah, and uh, down into a, a legitimate country area. And we did a couple, we did, we did a couple group builds, okay, mm -hmm. with uh, the, you know on our show. Or on our live feeds, where everybody bought kits, and then we kind of build them, and they were cool. You know, they turned out great, and we've had them sitting and not using them because we had a city, and uh, but they were they weren't they weren't they weren't designed to be for a big city. Right. They were di designed to be rural, and I always felt bad because we did such a good job on them, and you know you want you know you want to you want to make them you know a couple were built for our show. You know, we're designed for our show, and we haven't been able to throw them on there yet. And now we got a home for them, you know, uh, which is cool mm -hmm. uh, because they, they're special. They're special because it's not just special for us and our layout, but it's it's special because it's something we shared with all the modelers that we're friends with here on our show and uh, with the with the Facebook group and and everything else. With uh, so so to me, um, it's important to get this on there. You know, yeah. um, but I think it's great. Yeah. Well, that, that thing I made with the, uh, the Varga falls with the waterfall coming down and, you know, everybody's seen that, I think. And then, uh, uh, well now, and we have the other one with the mill, uh, and that's a rush rock, uh, falls, yep. the rush rock, no rush rock, whatever they called that, uh, rush rock falls. And so we combined the two, which was the, that was, that's what I called Varga falls. River. Oh, no, no, yeah. Rust Rock's different. Yeah, you're right. Rust Rock was the one with the mill. Yes. Okay, and now we got to combine them, and we can actually run a river through that makes sense and doesn't dump off into the waterfront harbor. Because that never really made sense that I had to trickle down into the harbor of the city. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? So now it can just run off the side, you know, of, like a river, you know, which would be cool. And, um... Yeah, so I'm looking forward to that as well. Uh, actually, doing the river, and uh, we haven't really built outside of those canals and that river on the top of, on the backside of, of the uh, Varga Falls, um, which is, um, yeah, that's uh, that one there is, that's the only river I've ever done. Done. Yeah. Know? So it would be neat to do like, like just a regular river for a short piece. You know, so yeah, yeah. this will actually be a long river for you. Well, it doesn't have to be real. It's not going to be super long. It's just going to make sense and it's going to connect, right? You know, so which will be real, really cool. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what we did. We have a little bit of damage to, to fix after that, but it's not the end of the world. So yeah, we're just going to go down. We already decided that we're going to go down there. And take our glue bottles and sit on some stools and spend a day down there, put some music on, and just sit there putting this 
pieces back on, gluing the pieces back onto the roofs and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, it'll, it'll be a one afternoon. <laughs> That's all we'll be doing that day. <laughs> That's fine. Whatever, you know. But uh, at least we'll know they're all ready to go. Yeah. You know? So. But um, yeah. So outside of that, I'm feeling really good about that. You yeah. Know, the layout part. So. But. Yeah. 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 And then we have. Um, we were just talking before we started recording. I'm going to be putting down some uh, flex track. We're going to get yeah. some flex track, get all that ordered, and have that ready. So, should yeah. be pretty good. Flex track and oh, some the turnouts. Yeah, the turnouts. Yeah, well, I'm not making my own homemade turnouts. No, I'm not. We're not that good. I don't so. have that kind. Of, I don't really care that much. Yeah, that's just it about the I track. Mean, don't get me wrong. I hand laid track one time for for that. Um, that thing I did for uh, it was one kit by George Celius, uh, the Fine Scale Miniatures kit, and um, Baxter's, Bax, yeah, Baxter's building supply, and I had fun handling in that track. It wasn't a real long section, what it's a foot and a half or some shit, yeah, but um, you know, two foot, I guess, a two foot, I don't know, um, but I had a good time doing just laying his ties out, and I could see where. It would get a lot of people find it relaxing and addictive, and I can see where laying your own handmade track would be a lot of fun. Yeah, you know, but it's very tedious, and if you got to do a lot of it, well, yeah, you're gonna be busy. So it's gonna take you way longer than you expect to get a layout done. So, so we're gonna buy our track. Good. <laughs> yeah. No, it'll be good. I'm yeah. excited. Now, let's go into, um, you have a, a listener question you wanted to talk about. Yeah, I, I, I one of, uh, well, it was um, a question I got, I, I would, I was painting these figures uh, for the cafe, for the 135th scale fit cafe, mm -hmm. for the World War II diorama I'm building forever and ever. And um, I'm painting the patrons that sit at these tables and such. I got a woman with a wine glass sitting on a stool. Or oh, sitting on a, a table. Uh, no, sitting on a table. <laughs> She's sitting on a chair at a table uh, out in front of a, a cafe, yeah. right? There's a man at another table with a wine glass in his hand. They're toasting each other. They got a little um, dachshund dog uh, that's going to sit that's sitting at her feet. And uh, a waiter that's pouring wine into a wine glass at the table. And uh, so, uh, you know, if you've been online or if you go check us out on Facebook, uh, either at our Facebook um, page of uh, Wiley Scale Modeling or Wiley Scale Modeling, um, uh, what was the name of our group? Overtime at the Bench? Well, no, the group group. No, it's not Overtime at the Bench. I think it's just... It's, uh, build, I build cool stuff. Wiley Scale Modeling, I Build Cool Stuff. Uh, Good lordy. That's what it's called. Okay. Or it doesn't say I Build Cool Stuff. It just, it just says, says Build, build Cool, cool Stuff. stuff. <laughs> yeah, a, it used to be the overtime group. I apologize. Right, right, right. So, anyways, if you see, I've been posting all the pictures of these figures I've been hand painting. I had to build them first. You know, they're, and, and when you build these figures, when you look at these figures, they... At 135th scale, it's it's interesting because you know, when we buy a, a figure for HO scale, it's already one piece. Okay, ready to go, paint it, right? Yeah, prime it, paint it. With these things, you got to build them. So each arm is separate, the torso is separate, the head comes in one or two pieces, and if it has a hat, maybe three. Okay. And, um, you know, so each leg is different, of course, and the arms are all different. The, uh, all the little detailed parts have to be glued together. And then after they're glued together, you got to fill in any, you know, lines or unseemly gaps um, with some modeling uh, putty. Mm -hmm. And then say, oh, carefully... You need to sand it down with a stick or something very small, tiny little files. And uh, you want to make it as smooth as possible and so you don't see any seams. And then so you build these things first, then you primer them, then you paint them. 
and you had to hand paint every detail, obviously. Right. Well, I've been doing it, and I love doing it, and I'm, you know, and uh, I had somebody ask me. It's obviously it's very small detail work, and everybody that's in our you know, fine scale modeling is doing that for the most part. Okay, but I do get the comments from time to time from many people on Facebook or Instagram um, from saying, and I'm sure you have as well, I wish I had the patience to do that. Yeah. That looks great. I wish I had the patience to do that. Or time, yeah. People, and, I don't want I don't and, time to do that. Or the time. Yeah, you do. No, not me. Oh, uh, I've heard other people say yeah, the same I don't thing. Have time. They're not saying time. They're saying patience. And I've heard that many times. And there are people that say, how do you have the patience to sit there and paint that? Well, it, it's not so much... It, it, I am, as you can attest, okay, this is kind of a rant and kind of a, um, a some advice is what this will be today. Um, if anybody knows me personally, um, especially Brett here, he can he can attest for this. Oh, you're patient. A, you have a I lot of patience. I'm not a patient person. You're a very I, patient person. I know you are. Uh, uh, you, you said I'm a patient person? You're a very patient I am not patient at all. I have no patience. I hate to stand in line. I'm, I get grumpy. I, I don't like things that take long. I want to take. I want to do it. Don't get me wrong. I, I want to do it right. Okay, yeah. but I, I don't. I can't. I'm not a sit still kind of guy normally in my daily life. I can't just. I gotta be doing something or thinking about something or whatever. I'm involved. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, and then when it comes to Having to wait for things, well, you know I can't wait for things. Right. I'm not good. I'm not good at waiting. Okay. So how do I have patience? I, I do have patience when I sit in here and I work. But it, but there's some rules to having it. It's not so much a talent to have patience. It's a mindset to have patience. So meaning, you have to create your environment to have patience. In my that's how I feel. Okay, you first of all have to have a love for what you do, which we all do. That's what makes us modelers. We enjoy it. It's fun, right? Right. But you enjoy when you have time to, in the evenings, to go downstairs and sit at your workbench and work at your workbench in the evenings. Mm -hmm. I know you do. Yeah. Because you talk about it all the time. Hey, I'm going down workbench. I can't wait to get down there. Blah, 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 right? Mm -hmm. Why? Why? There's a reason for that. Not just because you love the model, because you do, but because, why? Can you tell me? Uh, it's like my escape. It's your escape from what? And not to be rude and not to be ignorant, but what's it an escape from? Just life. <laughs> life? No offense. We love, we love our, our kids and grandkids, right? But it's nice at the end of the night. They're in bed. Uh, now you got your own peace and quiet, and it's just you. Mm -hmm. You know? And that's it, right? And, and I'm sure you feel that way. So it, it's you have created the environment that you're doing the work in, all right? And right. by doing that, you love going down there, first of all, because it's your home. And secondly, it's a new basement, and it's going to be cool when you get it the way you want it, like exactly. But it's, it's you know, it's your space. And... And that's what I've done to this workshop. Mm -hmm. I, you, it's not just a workshop. You can't just have a workshop or a works or work bench. Right. Okay. It's not just about that. Yeah. Everybody knows I got paints all on my wall and everything's in reach and uh, you know whatever. I got all my supplies in reach in my hands and it's all organized very well because I'm an organized person. However, that's not what makes it for me. Right. Okay. It, that's not what makes modeling special to me or makes this – now, don't get me wrong. It contributes to how efficiently I can work, okay? But in the end of the game is I want – I need to want to come in here, okay, and spend time. Like today, I spent most of my – it was a Sunday. It was kind of gloomy out. It rained off and on. Mm -hmm. I didn't have anything else scheduled, and, you know, I really had no plans. We did stuff all weekend with you and, and, and the kids, and, and then uh, we took the kids on Friday, and we did some stuff in Gettysburg. So we, we were busy, you know? And 
um, we had a good time. I enjoy I more than anything in the world. I enjoy going and doing stuff with my family and my grandkids. Okay, but today I wanted to come in here. What makes me want to come in here? You have to build that space. You have to have one rule when you go in your in your workbench or in your workshop. That one rule is what makes or breaks your modeling for having patience and time and keeping a steady hand and your mind free. And, and that is what you said, your escape. It's yep. turning it off at the door. When I come in this shop, I turn off everything at my door. Okay. I walk in, I know I'm committing to come in here and work or not work. I might not even work. Okay. I know I like to come into my shop and not have to do a goddamn thing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you ever have those times? Yep. Right? But I love it in here because I turned it into a place where everything stops at that door. No work, no you know, not no no yard work. I don't have things I gotta repair around the house, okay? Things, <laughs> things like that. Uh, the pressure wash the sidewalks. None of that shit, right? It's, I, I come in, that part is turned off. I don't, it may still be waiting for me to do, even later that day, okay? But at that time when I come in, I'm not thinking about it. I right. turn it off in right. my brain, right? Yeah. All, any stress that you have that's been going on in your day, okay, whatever, it, whether it be work-related, family-related, you know, uh, 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 financially, whatever you have that's going on in your head. Mm -hmm. You come in here, it's not happening. It's uh, Alice in Wonderland time. Yeah. It's not there, right? So, <laughs> you know, it's where you turn off and pretend it doesn't exist until you walk back out that door, okay? When you say, okay, it's time to become part of the living. And, you know, so you turn it off and... Um, It, and you turn it off so you can't turn it back on, basically. Right. Uh, I mean, that's what it is. And you make it, you ma you have to make your room everything you want it to be to relax, okay? So it's not just your tools and equipment and things like that. Yes, that's all fun. We love to collect that stuff and have it here. We love having our, our tools on hand. And well, we talked about that. But there are some key essential pieces that most people that I need to help make my room, you need to, before you turn it into a workbench or a workshop, you need to turn it into your, no matter how big or small it is, or how much money or little money you have or don't have, okay, you need to turn it into your man cave or slash woman cave, okay? Um, your you he need shed to or your she shed. Yes, yes, she shed. okay? I come in here, it's not just my workspace. I got a party speaker. I bought one of those big parties. I know you do too. Yep. Okay. Bought a big party speaker that I can run to my laptop. I have a laptop here too. I can look up anything I want on the internet. Okay. All my research stuff, all the books I told you about last week about modeling and things like that, you can get for free and things like, you know, remember we were talking about that? Uh huh. Okay. So all those things are all here at my fingertips. If I need to search for something or order something, from eBay or Amazon or wherever I'm needing it from or any retailer that we buy from for modeling, um, that's great. If I want to get on ESPN, which I did last night, made up a couple fantasy football teams uh, because it's fun to do, and I did the whole draft thing. I sat here for like three hours just doing a football draft. Mm -hmm. Okay, It's my place. I got some OU football stuff on the wall to help make it homey-like with a big wall clock and Stuff like that, you know. It, this is my this is my place. It doesn't cost me a lot. I got a little tiny TV set. I think it's like a little thirty-two inch TV set on the wall, and it's you can angle it, move it. It's on, you know. It's you know, it's it's not on the wall. It's on the a rack on the wall. What yeah. do you call those things? Oh, like yeah. a mount. An arm. You know, yeah, a mount arm, and it comes out. I can move it anywhere I want to, and in any direction. So. I had that. I bought myself a chair. Uh, I got a gaming chair, and I love my gaming chair. Okay, it's got a lumbar pad on the back. It's strapped to it. I got a little pad in the top for my around my neck uh, area, so I can lean back. I can prop that baby back and just watch the TV and a movie. And when you have your TV on the wall, it doesn't have to be in a big 
You know, I'm not talking about if you have room for monster TV, do it. You know, if you want. Okay. If you don't, I don't have lots of room in here. You know that. Yeah. Right. So I have this little TV on the wall. It's perfect for me. It sits over right over on the, over my bench, and over the top of my laptop, which I can fold up and move and give myself more workspace. But I have my TV hooked up to the Roku. Okay, I bought one of those little Roku's for like twenty five bucks, and you hook it on thirty bucks, maybe I guess what it is, and it's just and I stuck it underneath the TV, and I have a, it comes with a remote control, it controls my whole TV. I can have all my movie channels on there, like HBO and Amazon Prime, uh, Prime Movies, whatever they call it, and uh, Netflix, all that. It's all there. Okay, ESPN Plus, of course, right? Right. So I so I come in here and watch football you know, during football season or hockey games in the hockey season, you know, that kind of thing, right? So it's all here, and I can watch whatever I want. I have all the social media in front of me. Um, all, you know, I can contact everybody on our Facebook page, take pictures of our modeling. All that stuff's here in this room to relax. I bought coasters. You know, you can have coasters like the the fancy. Co- we don't want them fancy coasters, <laughs> right? The heavy coasters, and they get wet, and then they they get wet anyway. So you right. put a coaster on a table, right? So it doesn't get wet. What happens? The the, the the uh, ceramic coaster gets wet, okay, and then all your shit's sliding around on it, right? Mm-hmm. So, and then you got to wipe the coaster off. Well, you got to wipe the table off. And then now, now you don't just wipe the table off. You don't have to wipe the table off. You have to wipe the coaster off because now it's gonna have water stains on it. So I got rid of that, and I bought on Amazon. Uh, you know, you, you could do it too. Just some cardboard bar coasters. Yeah. You know, yeah, the, the, the... they're a square. Bar coasters. The fiber just, ones. Yeah, the fiber, the fiber cardboard is what they are. They're basically a chipboard, a little heavier than a chipboard. And I got, think I got like, is there 500 of them? I got like 500 of them in a big giant max, mass pack for like, I don't know, $8 or 10 bucks, something mm-hmm. like that. If I'll find the link, I'll try and put it up there for everybody. And, uh, and then, I put them up there until they get funky looking, and I throw them out. And if they fall off or you lost them, you dig in the drawer and you put another one up. Sometimes my puppy jumps up and grabs one off the top of the table and runs off of it and shoots it into a million little pieces. Okay, so he, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, yeah, Boomer loves uh, cardboard coasters, by the way. Nice. So Boomer is my, my uh, beagle pup. So anyhow, it's, um, and he, there's a photo of him up on Facebook this week. Um, but anyhow, it's, uh, you know, these are the things that I wanted to make my life comfortable. The only thing I don't have in here, and I thought about doing it, I just got to figure out where I would do it, is get one of those little mini reach-in refrigerators. Oh, yeah, you know? mini fridge. But if you got like a mini fridge or uh, make your uh, a recliner, if you have room behind you or around you or near your workbench or your recliner, you could turn off the lights and just... Um, Pop back in the recliner and watch that TV on your wall instead of modeling. Yeah. Oh, don't get it. You know, you don't want to make it so comfortable or to the habit where it doesn't really matter. You can too, but I don't want it to become where I'm in here just nothing but watching TV. Right. Right. I don't want that either. So, but that's what the 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 power. I'm sorry. The con, what they what they call it, the speaker I just said. Um, party speaker. Yeah, your party. Vibes. I love my party speaker. I have it Bluetooth to my computer, and I use uh, YouTube um, YouTube uh, Music. I have a subscription to YouTube Music, and I have all my playlists on there. And I just turn it on. I listen to whatever I want. You know, yeah. I can listen to podcasts, <coughs> all the podcast channels. I can listen to the podcasts on there, and uh, while I work, and it's just great. I mean, everything's at my fingertips. I also keep a um, a tablet in here as well um in case i need to like read something on my on my reader for the books and things like that or whatever or if i don't have as much space on my workbench for what i'm working with that i don't want to put the laptop up i can use the reader Mm -hmm. uh the the and it takes up less space so it's here but you know i it's it's just it's the best thing ever yeah roll paper towels on a regular roll a paper towel roll holder like, like those, those ones that stand upright on the table, uh-huh. I set, set two of them up. 
So uh, I come in here with a plate of lunch on a paper plate with a sandwich and chips. And well, and I have uh, I don't have as, right there, right? Yeah, I don't have as many. Only purpose. I don't have as many Sorry. of the luxury items like you do because uh, yeah, I haven't put them in there. But I am going to rebuild a workbench itself. Uh, yeah. And then when I do that, I'm going to um, I'm going to add some of that. But I also have that old power reclining couch. Yeah. So when we build the walls around the layout room, I might. Uh, I was thinking it'd be fun to put that couch in the corner, and you you could just yeah. hang out in the corner while we uh, build or whatever. And there's a couch yeah. in the corner of it. Yeah, that would be cool. Then we could just go in there and sit down. If you want to take a break and sit there and take. Well, take and I, a- I'll have walls so I can hang my TV yeah. on the wall too. Right, and we're building, and let's say we go down there and we want to build. And so, what does this do? Let's say we want to go down there and build, and but at, like there's going to be a Oklahoma Sooner football game at three o'clock. Mm-hmm. And so we build up to that point, and then we sit down, and we watch the football game. You know, yeah. or just go upstairs and watch a football game. But but we can, and then we, you know, we can. Or if there's another game, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't as important, yeah, but we'd still like to see it. We can still crash down there on the couch, just sit around and watch a football game and then get up now and then and do some work come or whatever. Come back to work and come back down, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, so what are we doing in a sense? We are creating our stress-free place, okay? And like I said, you don't have to have a ton of room. Wherever you're at right now can be enough, Okay. Just make it the best you can to make it stress-free. Make it something that's not just your workshop to work at, okay? Because then if you do that, you're just going to make it into a hobby that turns into a job, okay? Make it into something that you can't wait to get home from work from and jump in there and do something, you know? Yeah, it doesn't. Like I said, it doesn't always have to be the modeling. It can just be hanging out, you know, <laughs> whatever. And, but it's your hangout place. Nothing wrong with that. Look, if you have a workshop or if you have a workbench area, okay, you've already got, you've already got this person cave. <laughs> okay, it's yours already. You don't have to ask the wife or the husband for your own personal space. Okay. Oh, I want to build one. What do you think? No, no, dumbass. You already got one. You're in it. Okay. You are already in it. This is where you work. Okay. So create it and design it. Yeah. With whatever, you know, however you want to suit your needs to make it fun. Don't just make it. It's fun to model, but it's fun to model and make other things fun with your modeling. You know, that's how I feel. That's my rant. So, so how do how do I how do I have patience? I can sit for long periods of time in here because my area around me makes me feel comfortable and good inside. And it's a place you want to be. So it's somewhere I want to be, you know. And I can turn the world off. It doesn't take a lot. Yeah, you got to have a steady hand. Okay, so I see what he's saying. That ooh, the patience. That that's a patience thing. I get that. Okay. But if you have to still create that mindset, okay? It's not about – and then you got to be also willing to slow the pace down. And to read it, the way to do that is to relax mm-hmm. and have – and enjoy, your, enjoy what you do, enjoy your space. Then you will find the patience to do the finer detail things that you say you don't have patience for. Right. All right, that's my rant on that today. I think so. I think people also don't have the patience for painting those kind of detail parts because they mess up when they're doing them in the beginning. I mess up all the time. Well, no, hang on. They okay. they feel like they're not. They feel like they're not good at it. Yeah. In the beginning, and then they're just like, "Well, if I'm going to spend my time doing this, and I'm not good at, it, what am I going to keep doing this?" But then it's one of those things where you just have to keep doing it and get better at that doing that thing yep yeah but, exactly like, and then you'll get better at it and you'll get faster at it the more you do it because you get you'll make up your own little techniques to be better at it yeah exactly i mean one of the best things ever for me it is created on that television set on that roku 
when I have one of the one of the channels on there is the regular YouTube. Okay, get on there on your regular YouTube. Now I have the YouTube unlimited. I mean, it doesn't have the commercials or whatever. What do they call that, Brett? Is that YouTube Red or it used to YouTube be YouTube Premium? Uh, premium. Yeah. So I'm not having to watch commercials, but I have I saved all of the channels that I like the subscription channels. Okay, so you just pick the ones you the, the people your modelers you love, and I can just sit there and watch them like a TV show. It's like having your own personalized channel. Let's say, okay, I'm not. I don't want to watch sports. I don't want to watch a love story on the on Netflix. Is it, the the selection sucks ass that day, and you don't want. You know what? I turn a YouTube channel on, and I can I can run stuff. <laughs> I can I can run all kinds of stuff one after another. Mm-hmm. You know, and and you talk about you know the detailing things that you make mistakes on, and 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 what you were just talking about. I learned those things by watching a YouTube channels on different modelers that knew how to paint figures. Okay. And once you watch their techniques and stuff after over and over a few times, well, you start picking up hints and ideas and you know, you're going to make mistakes and you may have to re paint, spray paint the whole thing over with a primer and start over again. Yeah. Strip it, prime it and start over. I've had to do that. Okay. But eventually you put it, you pick your techniques up and you watch how they do these things. And then you start working and playing with it um, on, on detail painting for, for any model, be it for me, a tank or a figure, whatever scale. Um, I always test my paints first uh, by primering up some of those plastic sprues and things like anything you find plastic. It doesn't even have to be a plastic sprue. It can be a plastic fork or spoon Mm -hmm. and you, you primer it with rattle can or whatever. If you have a spray, if you have a airbrush or, or rattle cans, spray it, primer it and just use it as a test thing and test your paints on it. You know, you can thin them out and see how they, see how they work combining and, um, I, I practice on those. Like if I'm going to mix and blend three different colors of flesh paint to get different highlights at different parts of the, of the face or arms or leg, well, I'll blend it first and try it out and figure out what kind of consistency I want those paints to blend them together uh, to get different tones. Um, I do it on a spoon. Yeah. You were talking about that before. You just use, you just use a spoon, disposable the cutlery. Yeah, it's the same goddamn plastic, you know, <laughs> more or less. It's not, it's not resin. Some of them are resin, but once you primer, it doesn't matter if, if it's injected molded plastic or if it's, if it's uh, resin, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's covered in primer. So it's the surface that you're painting on is the same now. Okay. So, you know, in that case, that's the best way to learn and practice Okay, that what the practice comes to patience, you'll gain the patience for that part of patients, uh, skill patients from, from just practicing yeah. over, over and over and good brushes and good That's brushes. Just, good brushes are important. Those so. brushes that you got me, uh, or you gave me those little, um, not the, not the ones you gave me this weekend, but the ones that were like the, Oh, the black one, 20 odd, the smaller ones like that. Uh, yeah. those were, uh, I've been using them pretty heavy here for little detail things. Yeah, the main thing is just don't get any paint in the ferrule. Make sure your paint never enters the ferrule. No, I've been pretty good at that lately. I keep them like from. I yep. keep the paint from getting even halfway yep. up the bristles. Yeah, that's about where you want it, and, and you know, in the body of the the center body of the brush, mm-hmm. okay, and the tip, and then of course you, if you get it back in that ferrule. You you better make sure when you're done you get every bit of that out. Otherwise, the next time you go to use it, all your bristles are going to spread out. Oh, and yeah. I don't care what brush you're using it. It could be a it could be a goddamn fifty dollar brush or it could be a two dollar brush. <laughs> your bristles are going to spread out, right? Yeah, it's just going to happen. You know. So uh, it, it, the key is taking care of them and cleaning them up. Yeah. And here's another thing I wanted to I, – I, I saw it on a guy named Squidmire, okay? He has a YouTube channel. He does uh, fantasy figures and stuff like that, gaming figures, mm-hmm. and he's, a, he's one of the best, okay? And 
he's very popular in the gaming, uh, game painting, uh, well, game figure painting uh, modeler guys out there. And uh, he's funny. You know, I don't know if he's Scandinavian or whatever, but I love his accent. He's just funny. But him and his partner that he does the show with, they uh, they always are painting stuff or reviewing stuff. And, and they brought up a good subject because he was talking about his paintbrush. And he brought up how... He sticks the paintbrush in his mouth to get when it's clean, obviously, yeah. for the most part, uh, to to get the bristle. I don't know. I'm looking at some of my brushes. I'm not sticking them in my mouth. Well, that's just it. But I have many times these little brushes, mm-hmm. and um, I know they're clean, and I'll, I'll just stick it right between your lips there and run your tongue over it and just kind of t- make it a point again. Okay, well, I've just done that. Just point right so i got to thinking about how often and how many years i've been doing this how much goddamn paint as i have i ingested yeah <laughs> did you know that i looked at st- how much paint i've ingested now well what uh, there was a this is not modeling related but um i was uh talking to people i work with about this there's a thing that let me find it real quick do you know how much microplastic you in- ingest a week no yeah. I'm going to tell you. Microplastic. Yeah. Okay. The, uh, How is it ingested? It's in your food. It's in everything. Microplastics. Oh, okay. I, I see. Yeah, I, I know about that. Yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah. There was a study that found that this was, came out in the, in the winter, this past winter, yeah. That humans on average ingest about five grams of microplastics every week, which is about the equivalent of a credit card. <laughs> so you're in, not only are you ingesting. I almost shot out my nose. A credit card with a plastic we ingest. Every week on average. On average. That's insane. So think about. Not only are you ingesting about a credit, you're eating a credit card every week, but you're also eating a little bit, a little bit of paint, probably about a tablespoon of paint every week because you stick that bristle in your mouth. Yeah, I mean, I clean it. You know, I keep my water clean and stuff, but but you know, it's still dirty because you've been cleaning your water in the paper. In the paint, but then you stick it back in. I stick it in my in my mouth real quick and just kind of get it to come to a point. Just pull it back through my lips and it comes out to a point, right? Mm-hmm. And I must do that. Like when I do one of these figures. I was doing these one thirty fifth scale figures that I had posted. I'll bet you I've done that during the you know the whole paint job of it, you know hours and hours of it. I'm not, I bet I did that at least a hundred times. Yeah. For each figure. You know, it, it, you just you know you dab it, you clean it, you swirl it, it's back to its point. You start working again, and you get the paint on it, and you work again. Then you clean it, and you, you know because I, I I work with it for a little bit, and I constantly am cleaning a brush and re, reapplying paint onto it. Okay, but I, I got to think about that the other night when he said about uh, how he has to, he he's how a lot of modelers do that, and if they yeah, and uh, I was like, I wonder how much paint I'm ingesting doing. I never, I subconsciously did it, never even thought about it, you know. Now I don't do it when I'm working with anything solvent based, okay, uh, enamels or alcohol based or you know, those Tamiya paints, because I don't know what the fuck they are made of. <laughs> we talked about that no one before. Knows. Yeah. They, if they call them acrylics, but are they acrylic? Are they, what is it? Because the thinner that they have for them is lacquer thinner. They have another thinner called acrylic paint thinner um, X20, X-20A. And, um, and it smells just like the lacquer thinner. From what I understand, it is just like lacquer thinner. Okay, so in that case, you know, is it? Yeah, I don't. I don't put anything like that in my mouth uh, when I'm doing it. I'll use my fingertips to to bring the tip to a twirl or to a point. Yeah, because uh, I, don't, you know, I don't want to adjust that. But still, you know, be careful when you do that. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> be careful what you put in your mouth, kids. So, yeah, but, don't um, be licking lacquer thinner paints. <laughs> It yeah. goes back to the old joke of, uh, did you eat a lot of paint chips when you were a kid? <laughs> oh, jeez. Did you ever, you ever do something with paint or glue and things like that or any, any type of 
thing you want to apply to something and you're looking at your brushes and they're all your good brushes, but you know that whatever you're going to do with this, you know, you're going to, you're going to booger up your brush for oh, life. Oh yeah. You know, that brush is never going to be the same. I got a whole container full of old brushes that just aren't going to cut the mustard for doing anything constructively good with painting. Okay. They would normally go in the trash can, but because they aren't already totally gunked up, they're like really out of shape. It can't be reshaped again. Probably, I probably got too much paint in the ferrule like we were talking about. And <laughs> so I have them in a container and they're the ones I grab for when I want to put like white glue down on something. Right. You know, want to be precise about where I want to put the white glue down. Cause I want to put like, you know, some kind of, uh, uh, top, you know, uh, see, material like grasses and you know dirts and things like that yeah so um i use one of those brushes because then i'll never have to wash it never have to clean it i open up the trash open up the trash can with my foot and drop it in you know and um but yeah i have a whole pile of those brushes that are just you know crap brushes they're, yeah they're brushes that are like yeah <laughs> uh i'm trying to use a sports reference but they look at you and they're like oh you put me in coach you go, yeah. you coach, hey, coach. You gonna put me in? Time they were, you know. Yeah, they've had better. You, they're washed up now, coach. <laughs> yeah, they're like Tom Brady. You keep putting yeah. them in. They're done. I don't know if Tom Brady would actually be washed up anymore. So but, he's uh, actually talking about coming back and signing with the Minnesota Vikings. No. Yeah. <laughs> That's too funny. There was a. I saw. I saw a bunch of stuff on doing that. I saw a bunch of stuff on X. About uh, he's he's training to come back out of retirement this season to oh play for the Vikings. God. Oh my God, that's a, that's just a, that should that should not be allowed. The, the NFL's got to be allowed. <laughs> You're done. You're done. We're not letting you back in because every time you do this, a big to do about. Although that's probably great for the NFL uh, and the Vikings. Yeah, and the Vikings too. <laughs> NFL. Wow, who would want to go to the Vikings? He probably won a Super Bowl with the damn Vikings too. He got that Jeff. He got that Jeffries guy as a receiver. That guy's insane. Yeah, but um, and they got a big yeah. offensive line. Yeah, true. But no, um, you know the the brushes. A uh, funny story on that, real quick. Um, I won't take all the time here, but but the um, <laughs> if you ever get online and go to a place called Timu, oh my god. And it, and I ordered all this stuff. You get when you first get on, you, they'll give you like all this free crap just for signing on. You get to pick all these free items and whatever, and then you pay for a couple items. You know, and it's not really expensive. It's not. It takes a little longer to get there. I've actually got some decent stuff from Timo. Okay, I've only ordered from him like three times, <laughs> and my credit card got stolen. No, no, no. I never had that issue. But I, I do everything through – I pay Timu through my PayPal. Oh, okay. Okay. So – but what I'm saying is the um, – I do anything like that if I can through PayPal or Venmo or whatever. But it's the um, – I, I got this stuff I ordered, and they were paintbrush sets. Um, I ordered these paintbrush sets because I thought, oh, you know what? I get free paintbrush sets and – you know, I can, I, I ordered like, I don't know, five or six different paintbrush sets and they came and one or two of them weren't too bad. Hmm. Four of them, they just, they, I got them thinking, oh, okay, they're going to be great. And they had, you know, the, they had the O size, the zero, the zero odd, whatever. And the ones and the twos and they had them, but they were on like handles that were like. A foot and a half long, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I'm thinking, this is for painting on a piece of canvas. I can't control this brush, right? Mm -hmm. So they went to a pile. I have them up here on this rack. And <laughs> they're, in a, in, they're in that pile. Because I'm not – and, they're, and they, were, they were practically, you know, pennies on a dollar, right. you know? So – um, and then I got some other ones that uh, I, I gave you a set in a cloth bag. And yeah. they're not, not the greatest ones. I got them from Timu, too. They're, I was they're not say, are those Timus? They have a long handle. Uh, huh? They actually aren't bad, but the handles are very long. Real long. That's another one that had real long handles. And they were just sitting in my drawer, so I brought them over for you. You can do whatever you want with them. Those are not going to be high. Yeah, they're a little big, too. 
Yeah, they're yeah, I mean, but you know, you could do something with them, you know. Now the the other ones I gave you, the smaller end ones, they're pretty cool. Yeah. And then I gave you some of those brushes that the people use for fingernail painting. And uh, I got them on Amazon. I got them on Amazon. Okay. Um those are those are pretty those are pretty cool. And some of our listeners out there or people on Facebook, I put a post up about it. And uh, they were they were trying them and loved them as well. They're real good for doing fine detail, tiny things like on figures, eyes, and things like that. You know, but anyhow, um, yeah, I have I still have some brushes in here from Timu that aren't even out of the package yet. And let me find them. And they are just. They're just butt ugly brushes. They're in the package in butt ugly. This one here has, um, yeah, uh, this one here has little sparkly things in it, like a, uh, like, um, they're clear, um, on the handles, mm -hmm. and then they have, like, sparkles inside <laughs> And then these other ones are Artist Brushes Value Pack says high quality and they're they got orange bristles and uh they don't look real high quality to me so i just left them in the pack because they're embarrassing looking and i don't want them over <laughs> no <laughs> but if you go to here's a here's a set of brushes i gave brett a set this is the ones he's talking about they're made by the fine touch and they sell them over at uh, Hobby Lobby in the paint brush section. Don't go to, don't go to your craft paint section. Go to your artist paint section, okay? And go there and get. It's called the Fine Touch Detail Brush Set, okay? And then I think they're running right now. They're running seven ninety nine for a set of those, mm -hmm. okay? And you get let's see, three, six. I have a brand new pack here. Three. Six, nine, eleven brushes to the set. So eleven brushes for seven ninety nine. That's not bad. And they're it's the ones you have. Yeah. Okay. And they're real good. They um and they hold up pretty nice for a while. You know, as long as you take care of them. Like I said, um, it's a super deal. They are detail. It's a detail brush set. It's called. Okay. They're black handled and they're in a little. Uh, no, a uh, no, three inch by seven inch bag. Mm -hmm. uh, hang, and uh, they all, all the Hobby Lobbies have them. Um, it's a good brush set. It's a good, it's a good detail brush set. It has some quality to it, and they're gonna last you a while. They're not sable brushes or anything like that. Yeah, but. They the brushes that Hobby Lobby has, even their real good artist brushes, aren't you know sable sable brushes. They're all nylon brushes, right? Okay, and you know some of them are some of the nylons better than others, uh, but yeah, they're not fox sable or anything like that. You know, you're gonna want that. You're gonna you're gonna get fox sable. You're gonna pay you know anywhere from you know, ten to twenty five bucks a brush or more, but. These last just as well. They do pretty good. I've been using them for a bunch of years, and I know Brett likes using them too. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not trying to give a shout out for Hobby Lobby in any way, but you know they got them. That's where they're at. You know mm -hmm. you can even more online too, for that matter. At one point, they used to give you 40 percent off at Hobby Lobby. You have a more. coupon. They used to have the coupons over there, right? Right. And they you get them for four night. You get the seven ninety nine, you get forty percent off. So you know, you're talking what, eight, thirty two, three three twenty off mm -hmm. uh, a brush set. So you know, you're, you're paying five bucks. You know, six bucks. Oh, I'm sorry, four four fifty five bucks for a set. And um, so it's um, uh, that's a good deal. I mean, right. and then what they did was they eliminated that coupon, said, oh, well, we're going to get rid of the 40% off coupon, and we're going to lower everybody's prices in the store. Well, they never really did that. No. They just got rid of the coupon. They didn't really lower the prices. No, you don't but ever get with, that. Well, then with those brush sets, I was I was like, okay, well, you know what? 7 dollars is still pretty good, right? So, because 
at one point they weren't called Hobby Lobby ch- had the label changed or so what that uh, to the manufacturer's label where they prepackaged them just called the Fine Touch Detail Brush Set, right? Mm-hmm. Now they aren't Fine Touch anymore. Your the brush sets are some other brand. I don't think it's the Fine Touch. You'll find them there. It's Detail Brush Set. Okay, they're marked as seven ninety nine. They they every other week in their art supply section they run 40% off um the two main brush companies that they use okay and art supply companies yeah. i can't remember what they're called <clears throat> and all week long all those brushes are 40% off well except for this set so they don't have to sell so they don't sell the set at 40% off they changed the label on the front, so it's not really the fine touch anymore. I don't know who it is. Uh, you just go look it up on on uh, Hobby Lobby, and they'll they'll tell you. Um, but yeah, um, they changed that, so now you can't get forty percent off of that brush set anymore. Huh. You know? But oh, seven ninety nine is a bargain, you know. Right. You can't beat that. I'm gonna. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm looking on here right now on Hobby Lobby. Uh, uh, well, I, I got rid of that app. But uh, yeah, Hobby Lobby has them, so Sweet. it's uh, good brush sets. I'm, I'm I'm particular about my brushes. I know we we all get a little particular about things like that. Yeah, yeah. you have your favorites that you like. Yeah, and, and it's nice if you have a Hobby Lobby near you. You run in, run out real quick, and boom. You never good. run in and run out real quick. Well, that's true. You don't. A store you don't like that. No. So, but um, nice. Yeah. Okay. Do you have anything else you wanted to hit up this week? I know we got another one coming up this week later, so. Yeah, we'll be doing another one this week. Uh, hopefully, I'll, I may have a guest. Okay. I'm not sure. May or may not have a guest. I'm waiting to hear back from these people. Um, I have two people that I'm working with to get as guests right Perfect. now. Well. And they're they're both you, everybody knows who they are, but they're good modelers, and uh, we're we're looking forward to that. So. Sweet. But yeah, we did a lot of bases tonight because yeah. we didn't guest. I don't think. We did a bad job at all. No. And, just, you know, there are about less than two weeks now or less than a week now for college football. But for the main stuff, the big weekend of college football, right. we're less than two weeks away. So I'm all excited about that. Your pro football starting up now too soon. So all good stuff. All good stuff. This is the time of year that's best. It is so. the best time of year for sports. Yeah. So. Yeah, exactly. I'm looking up something real quick. Detail brush set. So we can find out exactly what the name of that company is that makes that. I'm on their website, and that is there. It is seven ninety nine. It's called the Fine Touch. No, oh, nice it Fine Touch eleven piece set, synthetic detail brush set on their website for seven ninety nine. It's also in the stores for the same price. So it is the Fine Touch. So that that that's all different now. So. That's Perfect. great. I don't think that is included. It may be included, but it may not be included on the price of the 40% off. I'm not sure if they do that or not with that okay. on the other week. But uh, definitely go in. You can't beat that deal. It's less than, less than you know, it's what, 80, you know, 84 cents a freaking brush or some shit. Yeah. So, yeah, you can't beat that. No, not uh, at all. All right, that's it. That's all All righty. Right. Yeah, I'm good to go. We are going to be back on again this week, so you're going to get two this week. Yep, sounds so, good. Should be good to go. All right. All right. Y'all have a good night. Peace out. Later.